Peter Sit Hakurji, he is as my boss, T.S. Shankar Sahib used to say, and I can take li liberty, is a man of many talents. And I think it would take at least one more birth for us to know how much he knows. But with my little experience, I would say that, above all, he is a great human being. As an administrator, he did his accomplishments in various positions in the government of Rajasthan are still uh, uh, talked about. He was their principal secretary, and much of his time, he devoted to education. He was also divisional commissioner. And like you and me, I think above all, I think I would say sir, that you are returning to the teaching fraternity <laughs> because you started, you know, as a teacher in Delhi University for a few years, and then came uh, with flying colors in the IAS. At center, also, he held very uh, senior positions. And again, I think he's very close to all of us. And I think that is very close to his heart also, because when I was talking to him, he was saying that though he held several positions, education was one thing which was very close to his heart. And I would tell you how, whether to how in an extent it is true. I think it's more than true, I would say. He was also joint secretary of Human Resource Development Ministry. Around the time, you know, it was set up by our former Prime Minister, one of the former Prime Minister, Mr. P. V. Narasimha Rao. He was also Secretary, Department of Public Enterprises. And I remember that I used to read a lot about him and would also had the opportunity of uh, referring to his speeches. He was a person who talked of accountability, he talked of autonomy, he talked of freedom to public enterprises, and he wanted to establish a new relationship between the government and public enterprises. And around that time only I think the concept of Navatna, Maharatna, and many things were being talked about. Not only that, he also held, he was also Director General of the International Center of public enterprises or promotional enterprises which was set up by United Nations at uh, Slovenia and uh, I had the opportunity, he was very you know, kind enough to give me an opportunity of visiting the center and teaching what there and uh, during his tenure the center flourished like anything and the relationship between India and uh, Slovenia also grew to uh, extents beyond anybody's imagination. Now, this was one thing, but more than that, as I could know, he's a great literary figure, and many, you no know, one, many Chinese poems of Baiju and others about 1100 back, sir, as I could get from you. I think, you no, know, he has translated them. Uh, into English and also in Hindi. He's a great fan of Ghalib and he has compared, I think, he established a, a dialogue between uh, a poet of 8th century and then between him and he was comparing uh, the poet over there in 8th century uh, with Ghalib, you know, who was born, you know, uh, uh, after 1100 years or so. 
uh, he has also written gazals and he had the opportunity of uh, interacting with Kafi Azmi, with uh, his son, I think, you know now, son-in-law, son-in-law Javed. Javed Akhtar, and many others. And if you go to YouTube, uh, you would see one of his gazals has been sung by a great, you know, uh, uh, he is no more, I think. Uh, role. Hmm. Uh, role to. Role to to and uh, this has been sung by again uh, Jagjit Singh ji. You might have heard of Jagjit Singh. Jagjit Singh, he sung, you know, that gajal, and there is a big story about that. Uh, number of other things, I think, you know, freedom struggle, which took place in Mithila and that area. Uh, where, uh, you know, uh, big landlords were there and some of them, they lost their land and then how uh, they fought for their rights and they went all the way to Akbar and then those rights were restored of Jamindas over there and that was done, I think, by a person who was not very known. Uh, he uh, uh, had done a novel and then his khwaish was that whether this could be translated in English. I have also not gone through, but we can get, I think, that book. Uh, we can order through Flipkart, and I understand that it is a 500-page novel. And uh, that tells you so much, you know, about uh, the administration, you know, uh, uh, of government of our country there at Delhi, uh, you know, the, the feudal landlords, and, you know, the struggle, you know, the kind of struggle we have. Now, these are only some of the things, but there are many more things to tell, and uh, it will be a freewheeling, uh, you know, uh, talk, because uh, uh, even I, you know, I'm just like a small person knowing a bit, I know a bit of uh, many dimensions of his personality. But many dimensions we do not know, and we are, you know, uh, we, we are yet to explore. Now, given that, uh, please join me in giving a big welcome. Thank you. So, formally, my colleague, uh, Professor Kiran, sir, I think, because we have to go by formalities also, she okay. may give, but I'll say that, I'll say Dr. Kiran, then you introduce, uh, is our registrar. Please, I, I uh, go by your advice. She is our registrar, and uh, she's professor of uh, Insurance, Banking and Finance. She also holds uh, the Corporate Governance uh, Chair at the Institute. We have Professor Lakshmi. Uh, she is an economist and she is head of uh, our data bank on state and uh, central public enterprises. She is also head of our Knowledge Center at uh, IP, Professor Sai Shelja. Today, if you see Institute in this shape, I think much of it today, it is there because of Dr. Sai Shelja. Uh, she is an economist from University of Hyderabad, has published prolifically, and she is also an econometrician. Uh, she has done a book on econometric applications uh, uh, for public enterprises. And uh, our youngest colleague, Pagya, there, Pagya has dropped one of the toppers of our PGDM examinations, a very bright uh, colleague uh, from Madras Christian College, which is the second. I think college, about 175 years old now, I understand, uh, in India. And uh, she is doing a lot of work she's going to do on case writing, on corporate governance, what has happened in NC, what has happened in Tata Group of Enterprises, several things there. And uh, she has also an urge to join uh, the civil services. If I, you, know, you have not told me, but that's what I guess. And uh, there we have Dr. Shaheen. Dr. Shaheen uh, is our professor of quantitative techniques. And uh, she's working on business analytics, and she is also studying with the uh, uh, with Professor uh, um, uh, uh, the, the impact, sir, of IT on uh, society. How IT and technology is impacting uh, society over there. There we have Professor Usha. Uh, she's our colleague uh, who is Professor of International Trade. Uh, she also publishes prolifically, and then the next one is uh, Dr. Pratna Kumar. Dr. Pratna Kumar is an eminent colleague in the area of uh, marketing. 
Uh, she had done a lot of work on uh, tourism, and she also uh, uh, is looking after our startups and entrepreneurship uh, programs at the institute. She holds every year uh, uh, a big conference, and she is also in charge of our uh, uh, MBA program for executives. Uh, Professor Rajesh, uh, Professor Rajesh is an economist, and he does work in the area of macroeconomics, microeconomics, institutional economics, and also on international trade and infrastructure economics. Uh, he is specializing in the area of uh, energy, uh, energy economics. And uh, <coughs> Professor, uh, 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 there, oh, thank you. our head of the uh, chairman of the uh, IP Resource Center, and he has written a very good paper with uh, Dr. Shaheen. And uh, both of them are representing us in a big conference at uh, Bangkok in the time return. Come. Professor Rajesh. There we have Professor Karuna. Professor Karuna is uh, our head of placements. And uh, she's also head of our two year PGDM program on uh, marketing and uh, retailing. She also publishes a journal on uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in that area. And there we have head of our administration, finance and accounts uh, chief, uh, Mr. Fani. Uh, Mr. Fani has joined us uh, recently and Fani, Mr. Fani knows you because earlier he was for 25 years in staff college. And uh, you have come for a program there, I understand, in 1991. 94. 94, Ms. Shankar was also IP uh, director. No, who was there. Then we have Professor Ramesh. Professor Ramesh has taught in many universities abroad and is head of our three year MBA program for executives in the evening. Professor Kartik is our professor of uh, international business and is head of our two year program on international business at IP. Uh, professor Vivek uh, has also returned only last week from the US after a long, uh, you know, tour. Over there, he is a specialist in the area of human resource development, and he also uh, helps Dr. Karuna uh, as joint coordinator in the area of placements. We have a big challenge because now we are going to turn out 500 students mm -hmm. next year, and they have to work overnight like Dr. Shelza. Uh, professor Chandrasekhar is professor of computational economics. He is professor of finance. He does a lot of work on uh, new economy industry. He is writing on. Uh, on retrenchment these days, reskilling, also startups, number of things he has been, uh, and he is very actively publishing. His views you know, are considered very important by the press. Professor Mahesh is professor of retailing and also joint co coordinator uh, for uh, placements. And uh, he has published his papers through Springer at a very young age. And we have Professor Pawan Kumar, is a PhD, uh, on public enterprises from University of Hyderabad. He works in the area of valuation. He teaches international banking, international finance, uh, and related things there. And he's also joint coordinator uh, for uh, uh, examinations and helping Dr. Rao in that area. Uh, we have Professor Tivikram, who is head of our economics area. Professor Tivikram is also head of our publications. We have six journals, and one of them is being published by SAGE on corporate governance, which is uh, being edited by Dr. Kiran there, and another person from University of Delhi. Uh, both of them are editing, and uh, Professor Vikram is a professor of educational economics. His PhD is in the area of educational economics from the Tirupati University. We have Dr. Tiwari. Dr. Tiwari has recently joined us, and he's from IIM Indore. He's a, a doctoral fellow over there. And uh, Dr. Tiwari is a professor of strategy, and uh, also uh, quantitative techniques. I'm just adding, I think, I hope, I think, we need your help in that. Uh, professor Raju is a very senior colleague. Uh, he's professor of uh, rural development, rural economics, and also rural industries, has taught, uh, you know, done work in Oxford University and uh, uh, several other universities. Professor Rao is a uh, professor of marketing, also head of her control, uh, no, examinations, and uh, also by training a biotechnologist. Uh, he has done 500 projects on biotechnology for the government of Netherlands with Andar Kali, who is not here. Uh, she's in the 
uh, other campus. And of course, everybody knows Person Murti there who doesn't know him. Yeah. And there we have two young colleagues there, two young friends there. Uh, of course, you have met uh, Mr. Kishore, and these two are the aspirants to go to the U.S. So they've been trying to go to the U.S. Some more friends, I think, will be uh, postal registration. A lot of people are many. I think colleagues, many colleagues are there. But you know, I request Kiran to oh, please. Ljubljana, Slovenia. He has uh, 40 years of uh, exposure to development and management of policies for the government. He is also known uh, in the literary area as Professor Mishra was mentioning that he has a lot of passion for poetry and also for publication. Uh, he has got eight publications to his credit and has immensely contributed to the education sector as Sir was rightly pointing it out. Uh, his innovative project on universalization of uh, primary education, which is an international reputed publication, has been brought out by the World Bank. Uh, and we were little fortunate to meet Sir in 2007, I think if I remember correctly, at IPE Usmania University campus. We heard you uh, uh, talking about the disinvestment and uh, public enterprises. Uh, we have seen you. Uh, connected with the P uh, Department of Public Enterprises very closely and uh, understood how the disinvestment process was going on at that time. So thanks so much, sir, for agreeing to be with us today. And we would uh, uh, really see that uh, to know more about what is happening in our country according to you. And we will also share some thoughts on that. Thank you so much. Director Professor Mishra, uh, Dr. Murthy, esteemed members of the very eminent uh, IPE faculty. I think I'll save time and not repeat everyone's name, which I have noted down and can possibly read out. But I guess you would rather hear me talk about uh, uh, different things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be finally able to come uh, and meet you all formally. Professor Mishra has been uh, making this request ever since uh, he took over as uh, director. Uh, particularly after we met uh, in two successive years and spent uh, some good amount of time in uh, Ljubljana, uh, where he came and taught the MBA program uh, one, one uh, uh, module of the MBA program there. Uh, in 2007, 2006, 2007, 2007 and 2008. You might have gone there uh, in 2008 as well, the third time. Uh, I remember the third time I had resigned and Professor Mishra was kind enough to bring me some socks. Uh, which my uh, former secretary, who calls me her Indian father, uh, Susanna Drabik is her name. Uh, Susanna was with me when I bought the pair of socks uh, when I was departing, leaving uh, Ljubljana. And she remembered uh, that I had liked it very much. And uh, we were in, we are even now in touch uh, on Facebook and uh, 
once in a while through uh, email. So uh, I said, Susanna, <laughs> the uh, socks are uh, sort of, they were washed and uh, they lost color and the texture. So she said, uh, never mind, I'll send another uh, couple of pairs. And I remember that you had gone uh, for the third time that year and you brought me very kindly those socks. So this is as freewheeling as it gets. Uh, I start with an anecdote of how he brought me. Uh, he was kind enough to bring me. So he's very close to me and adds the word great, the prefix of great to everything that I have been. Uh, indeed, I have been secretary of uh, secretary to government of India in the Ministry of uh, Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises. It was a common common secretary at that time. Now the secretaries are two different: secretary heavy industries and secretary uh, public enterprises. But in my time, I am talking of about 11 years, 12 years. So, in the Hindu Shastra. It is, uh, uh, it is one of the things that is there is in 12 years is a yug. So one yug before now, when I was uh, the secretary, uh, I was secretary for both. And uh, indeed I was, uh, I, I write verse. I will not call myself a poet because a verse writer, all verse writers are not necessarily poets. So I am a verse writer. I also write prose. I also translate books. I have translated several uh, books, uh, some of which uh, I have promised uh, Professor Mishra I will try to send for him and through him for, the, for your library. Uh, but all the prefixes you might like to discard and then listen to, to what I have to say. Uh, then uh, probably uh, it will make more sense if I talk to you like one of you. Uh, <clears throat> indeed, I, uh, I started my career um, uh, some 55 years ago, uh, sorry, 50 years ago. Uh, in those days, there was no neat, net, uh, this, that, and the other. <laughs> Life was not so uh, complicated as it is now. So we, uh, when I passed out from uh, the Delhi University. These things you will not get to hear. You see, if I start talking only of what I did as uh, Secretary Heavy Industries, how many industries I uh, recommended for closure uh, from the Board of uh, Reconstruction of Public Enterprises, etc., etc., probably you will start uh, uh, feeling drowsy. But if I tell you what happened 50 years ago, how things used to be at that time, maybe you'll say, oh, yes, yes, it used to be like that. So I'm telling you stories. Uh, let me relate a few stories. So when I uh, passed out, uh, Professor B.B. Misra was uh, 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 the head of the Department of History. And it, it used to be like that. You know, I got a first in history after a long time. And I might have been one of the few Biharis who, who made it uh, into the first class, uh, coming from Patna, uh, which was a great, had a great history department uh, in the old days. Patna University had all these Jadunath Sarkar and R.C. Mazumdar and uh, what have you. All those historians were uh, Ram Saran Sharma, um, V.A. Narayan et al. Askari, 
एच ए आस्करी फेमस हिस्टोरियन बट इवन सो पीपल वेन दे केम फ्रॉम पटना टू डेली दे रेयरली मेड अ मार्क सो बी बी मिश्रा वॉज आई मीन देर वॉज नो एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशन पी एच डी एम फिल एट्सेट्रा इफ यू गॉट अ फर्स्ट इन एम ए ओ दिस इज गुड बॉय सो ही सेड आई एम सॉरी आई मीन द हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हिस्ट्री यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली is apologizing to a recent pass out and saying sorry uh, priyadarshi we will not be able to accommodate you in a campus college there was only one cam- campus no south campus uh, campus at that time so we will not be able to i was in the hindu college uh, though although the classes were always in the faculty of arts for all colleges and uh, so this is, uh, so, so he says uh, you will have to go to one of the new startup colleges called government college they they opened six government colleges in in the year 67 1967 and uh, i was the only history man the head and the tail of the department of history mm-hmm. of what is now known as bhagat singh college Uh, uh it used to be known as government college govindpuri uh, uh, the university of delhi so that is how i started my career and taught history uh, um, there for 3 years and uh, like uh, pragya here i was a civil service aspirant all the time and the principal knew it uh he 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 used to tell me okay uh, you got into the ips this year and couldn't join because you, you are color blind so what's the problem in any case you didn't want to go to uh, to the ips you wanted to uh, this was only a trial run you wanted to uh, be an ias like your father was so next year you will make it this is my principal uh, mr cooker professor cooker he was a professor of geography famous man cooker uh, no 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 sorry cooker he was the uh, <laughs> cooker is what the lecturers called him <laughs> in private his name was he, his name was very very uh, similar to mine except that it start it ended with o r e he was uh, either from punjab or uh, haryana and he was thakur mp mp thakur t h a k o r e but he was so nasty to some some of us not me because i was an aspirant and he thought i will make it next year to the ias and ias was a big thing so he was always very nice to me uh, but the older ones who had gone by and would have to remain lecturers for for their entire lives he used to treat them like dirt so some of us felt very bad about it and called him cooker <laughs> anyway 50 years down the line or 49 years down the line i was indeed traced all the way to palam vihar how they traced me probably through the ministry etc uh, they traced me and gave me such a beautiful memento of their 50 years because i was i think the first uh, amongst the first five to join that college Uh, the college started with three lecturers or uh, four lecturers and i was among them so they traced me and called me and gave me a uh, plaque which is more beautiful than the plaque which i got when i retired as secretary to government of india <laughs> by the uh, ministry people it's more beautiful and it does say professor priyadarshi thakur uh, so kiran don't call me priyadarshi in future 
call me Priyadarshi. Because what happened was that in 1967, when I became a lecturer in history, my everybody in Haryana, Punjab, Delhi region is very fond of adding that N I, and everybody thinks that I am a woman. I mean, before they meet me, <laughs> and uh, uh, my. Uh, uh, interview letter also came on the day of the female candidates which was a day later <laughs> so that is when I went to meet Professor Mishra and he said I am sorry about uh, the mix up but we will uh, have to accommodate you and they allowed me of course they were so uh, the pressure was so less uh, that brings me to the central theme of what I am going to talk about. You see, times were, because there were far fewer people, there was much more intimacy between teacher and the taught. And there was far greater amity between people. Anywhere you came across people, there was greater feeling of uh, born homie, a feeling of friendship, which is very fast disappearing in the present society. Very highly educated people, they brush past you they rub the shoulder go away don't have the courtesy or the time to even say sorry people do not think twice before just sort of uh, uh, doing something which is very annoying to the other man. This, it appears that consideration for the other people is disappearing from society. And people more and more one might say it's because of greater journalism or reach of journalism or the audiovisual media or uh, uh, greater reporting uh, facility being available. But I do think that people are becoming more and more insensitive to other human beings, to women. Cruelty to women or to cruelty to other people in older societies and in history is replete, history is replete with examples of such instances. It is not there. But common people in everyday life were far more civil even 50 years ago, far more civil to each other and the consideration was much, much greater. That somehow is very fast disappearing. People use at the drop of a hat very crude language. Trolls are, you know, creeping all over the social media, using the most vulgar language quite publicly without any shame. Even in day-to-day -day life, the kind of example of uh, 
brutish and cruel behavior that sometimes comes and uh, jolts your inner self is unbelievable. I mean, we are talking of Swachh Bharat. We are, there is so much emphasis on it. And a young, hale and hearty man goes and says, please use this toilet, it is right here. And, of course, he makes the mistake of offering the two rupees that will be required to go and be there. Use that toilet, one rupee each, two people you are advising. Please listen. You are advising, only advising, that look, this is where we sit, this is where we eat. Please use the toilet nearby, some sulab type facility. If you don't have change, please take from me. Man is... The man is not killed in the heat of the moment. The man is killed after argument, come back and kill this man. How dare he? There have been... I have come across... I am writing a book currently, which is towards conclusion. I, I have nearly finished. It's a very interesting story. I will send it for your library. Uh, kindly go through it. I will not talk about it here. It's an autobi autobiography of a famous uh, uh, Rani. Let the suspense remain. <laughs> Which Rani? <laughs> but the next book uh, I was planning, based on day-to-day -day reports which I read of the most heinous crimes, so, social crimes, that I read every day in newspapers. So, there have been many examples in my, you know, uh, which I have noted particularly, of people deliberately coming back with 10, 15 people and killing somebody deliberately after due deliberation and preparation for something very minor, some argument, some little uh, tanatani, some tension and you don't hesitate to kill a person. Come back prepared with hockey sticks, goons. So more and more young people are behaving as if they can do what they like. Is this a society that we wanted to build? Is this what we are educating people for? Now, I think there, there may be economists here and elsewhere in the country who will say, oh, this old man, he knows nothing, he has no statistics, he has no figures, he has not read any uh, surveys, he doesn't know how many of these will be joining the workforce and how India will become a superpower in 10 years' time. This Priyadarshi Thakur knows nothing. He doesn't care for statistics or empirical evidence. He is merely letting off gas. Our biggest problem is going to be our population. Nobody since the original Mrs. Gandhi, nobody has the courage to talk. Because one mistake historically was made of trying to 
without legal sanction. It is my firm belief that if they had passed a law in 1975 and said, you can't have more than two children, nothing would have happened. It would have been for the betterment of the country. But they didn't do it. They tried to force it, which is undemocratic. But, and they lost very badly. And then many other things happened. Historically, you know, all know. That mental block which got created in 1975 will drag us down completely. And I, you may feel that this man is a doomsayer. So I am, yes, I am a doomsayer. I think the place that I live in today, Gurgaon, where there are about maybe 500,000 apartments in those sky-touching uh, buildings, apartment buildings that you see, all will be you know, empty like the, those uh, Detroit housing schemes you might have heard of, where the motor industry, the automobile industry is crashed. And there, is, there are no takers. The municipal corporation of Detroit is, uh, has no money. And uh, there are no people who can live in those ghost uh, uh, flats any longer. Similarly, this time around, what might happen is that there will be no drinking water. Every year, the groundwater is getting depleted by 1.5 meters, no less. It is not in centimeters any, any longer. It is 1.5 meters. And all that we seem to do in the name of environment is tokenism. Just token, create a mission, create a, a, a kind of a bureaucracy for it, and think that it is done. A new ministry is created for some cleaning project, Ganga cleaning project, let us say, and Ganga is where that we have created a new ministry, what more do you want? We are losing our forest cover, we are losing the groundwater, there are going to be water riots. Yes, everybody will have, have a telephone and 4G connection, but no water to drink. And 70% of our body is just water. And replenishment of water is more essential than food. Our priorities are going completely haywire. I think tokenism has to go. We have to concentrate and do whatever we want to do, whether we, we are teaching or whether we are studying, or whether we are making something, manufacturing something, or whether we are doing cultivation. Now, uh, uh, they say, the problem with Indian agriculture and productivity is that the holdings are very small. How can we increase productivity when the holdings are so small? But when you go on uh, sort of adding an Australia every year to your population, the holdings are bound to become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. There will be inheritance and there will be subdivision. And more land will be required for housing, for industrialization. There will be many more singurs single type uh, uh, agitations, there will be many more like Dadri 
टाइप एजिटेशन वे दिस पॉलिटिकल पार्टी विल गो एंड से नो नो किसान का जमीन नहीं देंगे उधर से कहेंगे नहीं इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन बहुत जरूरी है एंड यू डोंट नो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग सो ग्रो वी माइट एट सिक्स परसेंट और सेवन परसेंट ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर इन दी एयर व्हाट डज ए कॉमन मैन केयर इफ वी आर ग्रोइंग एट एट परसेंट और नाइन परसेंट ही मस्ट हैव सम वॉटर he must have sanitation he must not live in hovels in in uh, uh, these uh, shanty towns in which are growing in every uh, every city where is the quality of life growth yes fine growth growth can be cancerous growth can be malign growth can be uh disorderly i can grow only from here then is it growth i mean you can say yes he has grown overall he has grown 6% but if i grow only from here and not all over that is not growth to my mind now every everything is getting affected i will tell you how i have seen it i will come to public enterprises sometime i must since i am in the institute of public enterprises i cannot keep telling you stories all the time in order to get into my ladder i have used this this plank but now i am coming to you to to public enterprises how does it affect public enterprises all the public enterprises the commanding heights public enterprises you have heard of commanding heights then this is a nehruvian phrase with which the public enterprises started the infrastructure building uh, necessity of the state coming and starting heavy industries uh, heavy machine tools heavy uh, engineering corporation power sector steel sail durgapur and all those which became sail later on why did they all become sick what was the main malady the main maladies were two i have studied this in considerable depth main maladies were mainly two one was overpopulation jo bhi mantri jo bhi santri wahan ka mere jaisa wo sab ka aadmi jo hai udhar easier to fit in because that is in the hands sarkar mein to ye hai wo hai बजट है फाइनेंस है बहुत तरह का प्रॉब्लम है कोई आदमी रखने में वहाँ तो सीएमडी और बोर्ड वो अंदर से कर दो वहाँ सो इट बिकम्स ओवर पॉपुलेटेड वेयर टू पीपल आर रिक्वायर्ड टेन पीपल आर एम्प्लॉय 